In the summer of 2019, three students from Hoptel Nunut Seavut, Denver Edmonds, Clary Glorty, and Mackenzie Frieda were working on an Agvituk archaeology project with Dr. Laura Kelvin to conduct traditional knowledge. Interviewers with Hoptel community members. They were also helping Sarah Wilson from Memorial University with her MA research documenting Inukshuit to learn more about Inuit landscapes. An Inukshuk is a feature made of stones. If there is one, it is called an Inukshuk. If there are two, they are called Inukshuk. If there are three or more, they are called Inukshuit. They are found throughout the north. They can be made in many different forms and have many different meanings. The Nukshuk to me is uh, a formation of rocks representing like a, a person or a, a human on the islands around here. They're one thing, but they have many meanings. Uh, for example, if you're out in the boat or if you're out on the skidoo and you see a pile of rock on, uh, on top of a hill, it, might, it mightn't be a big inukshuk like the ones you know like that, but uh, that meant that there was a group of people within that area or there was a, uh, a settlement. But the, the other inukshuks, uh, uh, the ones that's really high and, and like pointing, that, that's the inukshuks that show you the way home or show you the way to the hunting areas. But they also used the Nookshooks sort of like a corral as well. So when they herded the uh, caribou into the direction they wanted to go, there were also uh, Inuk men behind uh, the Nookshooks with their arrows and spears. And once the caribou got into that corral, then the men would kill their uh, caribou that way. Inukshuit were also used to communicate the safety of trails. For example, two rocks would indicate a dangerous trail and three rocks would indicate that there is a safe way to travel. It is difficult to tell how old an Inukshuit is. The best way to tell the age is to date other features like houses or tent rings that it might be associated to. Other methods were also described to us. I guess with the, the archaeologists that I worked with, uh, they, they'll let you know how, well, I don't know about an exact age, but they'll tell you how old that uh, pile of rock they'll say is. Because if you just put it up, the, the, the ground underneath uh, hasn't gathered any dust, you might say. But when you got the older Inukshuks you, and you say remove it and then underneath you'll find uh, uh, sand and, and probably uh, vegetation, you know, if, if it's a really old uh, uh, Inukshuk. People recommended using lichenometry to date the Nuxuit, so that would be looking at the lichen and seeing how big it is, and then looking at the lichen growth rates to see how long the lichen has been growing on that surface, but I don't think that's very reliable because you don't know when the lichen started farming, like it probably wasn't when the Nuxuits were built. Inuktitut is an island close to Hopdal, famous for numerous Inukshuit found on the island. We visited Inuktitut and saw Inukshuit, tent rings, and a polar bear bed. The island is used for polar bear hunting, seal hunting, and goose hunting. Yes, let me see Inuktitut. I've been there. Uh, we used to go out there, put up a tent in the spring, like when we go seal hunting, eh? Yeah, we used to spend our time out there. Mm -hmm. Inukshu too, just straight off of here. That's where we used to have tents and tents in that day eh, for when they go for the spring. Put up tents there for the spring and stay there till break open water. Seal hunting outside, eh? Because we used to go on the top of the hills, spying and all that. There was Inukshuk on top of there. That's where we were spying from.
So I'm a master's student at the Memorial University of Newfoundland in St. John's and my research project is looking at Inuksuit a lot across the landscape. Uh, so I'm using a drone to map the Inuksuit so that we can look at it um, spatially to see where they're laid out on the landscape. And I've also been doing literature review and looking at past interviews to figure out what they would have been used for. Okay. So this is the drone that I've been using. It has a camera on it. Um, basically when the weather is good enough, so when it's not foggy or windy, I can collect overlapping images by flying it in a grid. And then from that you can create 3D models. So I'll be able to make models and then share them with the public for people that can't get out to these remote places. There are many rules and regulations for operating a drone, including when and where you can fly your drone. Make sure you have a drone pilot certificate and register your drone. There are penalties including fines and possible jail time. See the Transport Canada website for details. I'm not sure about the traditional sense, but uh, you go all across Canada, you see, you see or hear that people are building Inukshuks. So, not in a traditional sense, I, I don't think they, they do. Uh, unless they know, if people go, say, uh, caribou hunting, for example, north, and they notice that the Inukshuk was, uh, had tumbled down or, or whatever, then they probably would rebuild it. But uh, I haven't heard of anybody really using the nookshooks for a traditional reason. Yes, they do. When they go anywhere, like the places they never went before, they put a nookshook up for sure. Yeah. I did anyway. <laughs> yeah, I built, I put a few up where the places where I went. Like uh, when, I, when we were protesting down Voices Bay one year, I put one up down there too to let them know I was there. Yeah. When we were protesting. Yeah. It is good for them to know about uh, Inuk eh? Yeah. Because they be able to tell their younger ones to tell about Inuk to tell them about Inuk Yeah. Yeah to carry on with the with our tradition, is it what you call it? Yeah. Overall we learned a lot about Inuk Street. People used them long ago and will continue to use them in the future. Thank you to everyone who shared their knowledge.